Brim is probably the freshest controller coming out of these new set of aging changes this act. And boy oh boy is he fun to play right now. He got some much needed buffs to his kit, and now his stim beacons have introduced a movement buff into the game. It's pretty safe to say that Brim has had a revival in the agent meta. What's going on Pro Guides family, it's your host Sergeant Frost, and today we're bringing you an updated Brimstone guide for the new year and also the new Brimstone. And of course, to keep up to date with the new changes to the meta as well as build up your skill set for climbing this episode, make sure to visit us at ProGuides.com where our Radiant and Immortal level coaches are more than excited to guide you to the next level. So if you're interested, make sure to click the link in the description to get started. With that being said, let's get into the guide. So before anything else, let's first discuss what allowed Brimstone to go from a beginner or troll pick to a borderline S tier smokes pick. There were four changes. First, his smoke increased in height slightly. Secondly, his smoke range was increased a little bit. But the two most important things, his smoke deploy time was halved from 2 seconds to just 1 second, and his stim beacons, which seemed utterly useless and clunky before, are now absolutely gigabuffed and have been given a 15% speed boost in addition to original rapid fire. The smoke changes are definitely a nice quality of life change that adds to Brimstone's viability, but the stim beacon is where the real buff is sitting at. The 15% speed buff is kind of a crazy change, allowing for some really fast paced rushes not only with rifles, but also guns like the Spectre or perhaps even more ironically the Frenzy running gun on pistol rounds. Sure, you might not be able to run and gun with rifles, but bursting through an initial choke feels a lot stronger than before. You can swing at such speeds that even higher level players tend to start whiffing a bit, and once you're out you're stimmed up with the weapon buff as well. I think you get the point, but the stim beacon definitely changes things up quite a bit. Alright, now that we know what's changed, let's go over his kit. I just mentioned this, but his first ability is his Stim Beacon. It's a 100 credit ability that you can buy two of. You toss it out and when it lands, it gives teammates in a small 6 meter radius a 15% movement and firing speed buff for 4 seconds. The buff zone stays up for 12 seconds, making the max duration a whopping 16 seconds. When it comes to his Stim Packs, the rapid fire is nice, but what really makes it good is the movement buff. Before they added that in the previous patch, it always felt awkward to use on attack since it wouldn't really help you break through a choke. And on defense, it never really worked as you dropping it down made noise which gave away your location. Not to mention the rapid fire was also something that you had to get used to, which meant you had to deal with more things than before. But now that we see Brimstone all the time and since peaking with it is now much faster, the benefits of the stim pack is much more noticeable and advantageous, although you'll still need to get used to the change in movement speed and fire rate. When it comes to using the ability, it isn't all too difficult. On attack, you have the obvious play of throwing one down right before you execute onto site in order to send you and all your teammates flying through a choke. But of course, you can also use it in order to beat standard timings and early contact points. In a game like Valorant where spawns are consistent every round, and people know exactly when or where the earliest points of contact are, beating those expectations by using a 100 credit ability is a cheap way to get a great advantage. Not only will you and your team make your way to the bomb site a lot quicker, you're also very likely to catch enemies off guard having beat the earliest expectations and intuition by as much as full seconds. In short, the stim pack is really, really powerful right now as an attacker, but don't underestimate it on defense either. It can also be used to beat spawn timings against attackers if you're trying to fight aggressively. Sure, you and your teammates might not be very likely to run it down while defending, but even using your beacons for something like a retake or maybe just a faster rotations can be very helpful for you and your team. One quick tip, if you're planning to use multiple, like for a quick rush for example, make sure you space them out properly. The effects of a stim beacon last 4 full seconds, so using one, then using another one 2 seconds later is a pretty big waste. Something that's especially effective although super low skill is using the packs to crouch spray with the phantom. Crouch spraying is normally quite horrendous as you're super low and very easy to hit, but with stim packs it makes your spraying quite accurate while you remain somewhat hard to hit. Now don't get me wrong, you shouldn't be trying to force this all the time, but you can use it on occasion if it feels right to do and your enemy is relatively close. Of course, like I just said, on defense the stim beacon can also be used for retakes. Retakes are similar to sight takes in the sense that you usually have to enter through pretty predictable corridors, and it's in those instances where the stim beacon really shines. Not because of the firing speed, but because you can enter so fast you oftentimes cause your opponents to miss, or at least give them a harder time trying to hit you. As a general tip to boost improvement, just use them whenever, and reflect afterwards on what your stim beacon achieved. Did it allow you or your team to take a lot of space or even get a kill? If so, then you probably did great. But if nothing really happened, and even you yourself don't know what it achieved, you might want to think twice before using a similar beacon again. Before we move on with the smokes though, let's quickly go over to the question of the day. Today's question is, now that the Brim rework has been out for a while, what are your thoughts on it? Do you feel like they overdid it? Or perhaps do you believe that this was pretty much the needed shakeup that the controller class has been deserving for a while? Personally, I really like this controller shakeup, I think it's going to make the game even better moving forward. Whatever you think, make sure to comment down below. Now let's get talking about his next ability. So his next ability is his signature and that is his smokes. 
He opens up his own little iPad and then he can select up to three locations to smoke at once. This is actually a unique ability for Brimstone, as the other controllers can't smoke multiple positions at the same time. And his iPad seems to have gotten an upgrade now since it even places them super fast. However, his smokes don't have as much range, so you're going to have to be much closer than with the other controllers. And lastly, his smokes last a whole 19.5 seconds, and they aren't hollow like Omen or Astra smokes which makes them a lot harder and scarier to walk into. You start off each round with one, but you can buy an extra two for 100 credits each. Other than that, well, they're smokes, right? So they work just like you would expect smokes to work. They're great to use for executes and map control on attack, and they're great for defense as well. One thing you should consider though is how you want to place your smokes. I can already spoil we're going to upload a guide on the best smokes pros use on each map pretty soon. So if that's something you're struggling with, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell in order to get notified as soon as it's up. But to give you some more short general tips, you usually want to make sure that smokes are deep enough to make sure your opponents are not allowed to partly walk out safely. That is unless you are smoking like that on purpose to play around it and create space. Smoking wide on purpose is a pretty good play on occasion in order to get kills from an unexpected angle. It also helps with dodging flashes or just in general to have some extra cover. Just make sure you don't do it every round or you will eventually get pre-fired. The whole idea behind it is to surprise your enemies. So if you're not surprising them anymore, then it's probably better to just do what's objectively the better smoke, which is to have them give as little room to the enemies as possible. Next up is Brimstone's Incendiary Grenade. It costs 250 credits and it only has one charge of this ability that must be purchased. It lasts almost 8 seconds, which makes it a very long-lasting molly as well. It also does damage very quickly, so it's quite potent. It does have a gimmick, however, which is that it bounces once before landing. Some basic uses for mollies are simply using them to clear corners or even support a smoke. If you have your smoke down already but have the feeling your enemies might just be crazy enough to flash and sprint through, then putting down your molly to stall for your teammates to rotate is a really good play. Having a molly on a choke point is really strong since even standing in it for a split second will deal a lot of damage. In general, it's a strong tool for clearing space and functions like any other molly would have when landed. As with all mollies, don't try to force after plant lineups. I know playing lineups is a pretty popular way to use utility, especially on agents like Viper. But please, for the love of Brimstone, don't force it too hard. The reason is not because lineups don't work, but it has everything to do with being too focused on them. If you're too tunneled on playing for lineups, you miss opportunities you should take, and you might not help your teammates when you potentially need to. Essentially, playing lineups goes from a tool to a playstyle, and the lineups playstyle is one where you throw rounds because you can't help your teammates when it might be the best play. Basically, learning lineups is cool, and it definitely has its place but try to think critically first about whether playing lineups is the best play at the moment. Then for his ultimate, Brimstone can send an orbital strike from the skies and destroy anyone and anything where it lands. It is a simple point and click, but if you hear his sound cue, you better run as if you don't, you'll be in big trouble. It has huge potential, but also a huge flaw, and that's its activation duration. If Brim could cast his ult instantly, I'm convinced it would be straight up broken. But of course, it's balanced by giving opponents just enough time to get out of the way if they start booking it immediately. Ulting in the open is thus pretty pointless, but there are three types of ultimates that can be very effective. Firstly, we have kill ultimates. These are brimstone ults where you are simply trying to get a kill. Some spots in Valorant are hard to get out of, and because of that, you can basically have a guaranteed kill if you place your ult and an enemy is in that position. The most well-known one is probably lamps on bind, but you can also do the same thing on ropes for split, for example. These two spots are definitely the best examples for positions that are hard to escape from, but experiment yourself and come up with some other cool spots to get ult kills. The other type of ultimate is those where you force your opponents to move or disrupt their push. You can do this for example on someone in hookah, but there's tons of spots where you can try this same concept. The idea here is to force your opponents into a position where they don't want to be, to either clear space for your team or to force an enemy to fight you in the open. And lastly, post plan ultimates, which are essentially ultimates on the bomb to stall a defuse. These are especially great if time is low, and it's impossible to contest from the enemy team. This pairs well with the Brimstone Molly and gives Brimstone a pretty good strong post-plant presence. All in all, his ult is pretty self-explanatory, so give it a try in game and see how it goes. One thing that is really cool about Brimstone's playstyle now is that with the changes to his stim beacons, Brimstone got a direct buff to his ability to execute on the sites as an attacker. And since his post-plant capabilities are already very strong, Brimstone is in a really strong spot currently with how well he can control the pace of a round. And his strengths play into themselves making him a complete character. As a general game plan, you can play to break into sites quickly for a plant with his quick smokes and speed boost, and then play the post-plant game with your team. In that sense, Brimstone works really well in fast comps and maps that are good for explosive site takes, like Icebox, Ascent, and Fracture. But of course, be careful of maps like Breeze or Haven where his smokes might not be as effective, and he has trouble setting up without being too obvious in his positioning. All in all, Brimstone is a strong pick for fast-paced teams looking for explosive executes. 
But of course, it's always a good idea to experiment with different compositions as the meta can always shift in interesting ways. And with that being said, that concludes our updated brimstone guide. For the longtime brimstone mains, let us know if you have any cool brimstone tips in the comments, as brimstone is definitely a meta pick right now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to keep up to date with our frequent uploads. This has been your host Sergeant Frost, and good luck on the grind this act.